Hello, world. It's John Preto, and I have a very special guest today, Mr. Leland Best. Leland is a very good friend of mine and a streaming expert, and I am going to bring him on the stage right now. Hey there, Leland. How are you doing, Mr. Preto? Nice to see you today. In these times of people Zooming and doing stuff at from home, in our long experience in streaming from home and trying to educate people, right? Yep. Uh, I thought it would be a good time to share with people your updated book, which is up there on the screen. Yes, sir. Actually, I have a full size screenshot of that. Uh, best Live Guide in bestlivedive.com. Yes, it is. I went ahead and got the domain for that. And it just redirects over to my current website at BCB Live. Um, but that is where you'll find the download page for the free download. So tell everybody about yourself a little bit so that they know that you've got the expertise to write a book. Sure. Yeah, I've got a little bit behind me. Um, back in the 80s, I came out of radio and television two years worth in high school. I used to broadcast the alumni at uh, Lake Orion Senior High. After that, my teacher kind of said, well, you should kind of stick with this. And from there, I went to work for United Cable Vision as a cable operator, tech editor, studio hand, van operator, editor, things of that nature. And it was about two years in, I found out that the company was going under. They were closing the cable institution. So I went into civil engineering for 25 years. But when I saw Hangouts on Air come out in 2012, it was like taking me back to being able to broadcast radio and TV again, like I always did. So I jumped on board. And for the last eight years, I've been learning everything I can about broadcasting to the internet. So, it's kind of so Leland and I met about five, or four or five years ago on a, yeah. on a social media streaming site called Blab. Um, right. This is my 24th year in the business. Uh, they call me the grandfather of streaming because we streamed way, way early. In fact, when version three or revision three comes out of Leland's book, I have some additional history to add. I was disappointed he didn't interview me for the history of streaming. <laughs> I probably should. Uh, I was definitely there in the very, very beginning. And I, I can walk you through some stuff. There's some holes in the history that I can fill in and Good. Uh, we'll have that conversation another time. But today we're going to talk about streaming and podcasting pro tips. Mm -hmm. I put together, you know, I've been watching all these broadcasts from CNN and Fox News, and they have these even journalists at home with bad lighting, bad audio, Very bad nice. cameras, and it's driving me crazy. So we decided to put this little presentation together to show people with not a lot of money, not a lot of money. I say you. For under a thousand, you could really look like a pro, wouldn't you oh, say, Leo? I, if people saw what I've hacked together <laughs> over here to create my studio, they'd probably laugh because the pictures wouldn't represent, in all essence, the most professional way to do things. But that's because through the years, I've found these little shortcuts that I can pull together that work really well. So, yeah, for literally under a grand, you can put together a really nice studio at home that'll do anything that most of the TV producers out there can do today. And for about 500, you could create an okay system, right? Yeah, for sure. And we're going to step through each one of these categories of what makes up streaming right now. I'm going to switch over. Where's my producer, director? Right. I need a TD on this. <laughs> yeah, okay. right. So the first thing we're going to talk about is web cameras. So go ahead, Leela. Well, they're a little hard to find right now, as you know, John, and probably a lot of you out there who are experiencing that fact, trying to get your hands on a web camera. So we apologize for that inconvenience, but it's kind of an unseen circumstance that we're dealing with here with COVID-19 at the current time. Um, the webcam is really the way I'm coming to you right now, John. I'm using a C920 by Logitech. Great it's a camera. 80, 30 frame per second camera. Great doesn't camera. match up quite to the Brio or the 922 even, which has 60 frames per second available for it. Right. Uh, the Brio being a 4K camera and the latest is the stream cam, which goes for about $160, a 1080, 60 frame per second rotatable camera that you can spin to get square video or uh, 16 by nine video. Atlanta. Is it square or is it uh, like the portrait? camera is? Yeah, it gives you more of a, but I think it does a like one by one Like square. what you would get on your mobile device. Yeah, it might be 4.3, I can't say for sure, or 3.4 maybe. I, I'm not sure if they've used a standard ratio for their right. format, but I think it's a one-to-one -one ratio, to be honest. One-to-one, one. wow, interesting. Um, so so I've been using web cameras for 100 years. 
Uh, I've got them listed up top here. So the, like you said, the Logitech C920, which was selling for, before the virus came around. What was it? 50 bucks? Fifty dollar for under fifty dollars actually. I was seeing prices no nearer to forty before the virus wow. went global. It's a great camera. It's a ten eighty p camera. It's a great camera. Super reliable. Good picture for most streaming applications. It's a workhorse. I've had mine in production for the last six years, and it yeah. hasn't failed me. But a couple of times, just from you know USB crossovers type stuff, where two different devices were competing for the same space, but that was about the only problem I ever had with. It. Yeah, so that's a great starter place. That camera, I've had, I've owned several of those C920 camera, and it's it's a great camera. Stepping up from there, if you want to have, you know, a more professional look, uh, something that you have the ability to change lenses on. Some of these cameras, the one I like the best right now is this Sony A51 HDMI from from Sony. Yep. And the nice thing about this camera is it's got a flip out screen so you could see it for bloggers. So the oh, screen see. flips yeah. up so you can see the back of it and you can change these lenses and then it feeds HDMI and then you need an adapter to get HDMI into your computer. So you can get an yeah. HDMI to USB adapter and then, then feed that into whatever application you want to use. And I would say 70 or 80% of the bloggers out there are using this class of camera. Okay. Canon makes one, Sony makes one, Fuji makes one. They all make these cameras and they're in the four to $600 range. And the adapters are gonna run upwards of a hundred or maybe even $150 in some cases, yeah. if you want a really nice one that's circuit circuited solid state um, that you're not going to have real issues with. It's not a simple, you know, conversion pin adapter like you'd expect on a serial port or, you know, changing out video ports. It's, it's a little more elaborate. Than that. Right. So uh, most of the bloggers that I see are using those classic cameras. And then there's the top of the rung, you, as you say. Uh, this is a camera from Blackmagic. This is a camera that I own. It's a great camera. It's a micro four thirds lens. Mm -hmm. And you can put whatever kind of lens you want on this thing. Um, I've got a Leica lens. I've got a Panasonic lens. And it's a beautiful camera. You see this in a lot of studios. Uh, so these cameras range in price anywhere from about 1000 up to 50000 mm -hmm. You know, the big cameras that you would see like at the NFL games? Mm -hmm. Those are quarter of a million dollar cameras at mm -hmm. NAB every year. I like to go to the Sony booth and they've got a set set up. And you can actually use one of these cameras and they got like the handlebars where you're oh, yeah. able to zoom in with the, yeah. with the handlebars. Uh, cool. They're a lot of fun. But if you're serious about this business, what I would do is I would start at the low end and work your way up. Yeah. Uh, it's exactly what I did. I started with the Logitech C920. Then I got one of these Sony mirrorless cameras. And now I'm using these Blackmagic and, it, and the picture and it's 4K. So the Sony's 4K and the Black Magic is both 4K cameras, and nobody's streaming that high yet until um, bandwidth gets up there. But uh, these are great, great solutions for whatever type of streaming work you're trying to do. And I expect to see more 4K webcams coming out in the near future as well with think. the way things are going. It's hard to say, and who those manufacturers will be is even hard to say right now. I, I suspect... Before long, with the way things are, makers like Sony, Canon, Nikon may jump on the web bandwagon, yeah. the webcam bandwagon, and start making smaller cameras. One thing we need to mention about the Blackmagic design, though, that's just really unique to this type of camera, is that there's a lot of software programming that goes in, that, which makes these cameras not so obsolete over time, so that you can upgrade them internally rather than just with component add-ons. The computer chips inside themselves, the ROM devices on the computers and the firmware can be upgraded to produce more component features, right? 100%. Okay, um, let's skip to the next slide. Now this is part art and part science. Let me switch to this slide. Definitely need a one director a next time we do one of these. Yeah, I hear you. Here's how a photographer or professional videographer is going to light a set. So. Um, when the news came to my house after my daughter was killed, they came in and the camera guy set up the lights. I already knew this because I've been doing this for so long, but mm -hmm. it's a, called three point lighting system. 
And you start off with that key light, which is 45 degree angle from your subject. And that's how you set your exposure of your cameras from that key light. You turn on that main light at a 45 degree angle. And then you set your exposure of your camera. Then you turn on that fill light, which is 50% angle at the subject. And then you want to set up a backlight. What this does is it makes the subject pop. You see the light that's on the back of a actor's hair or their shoulders, and it makes them pop. And if you don't do this right, you get a very flat image. Leland, anything like that? The only thing you mentioned, you said that the fill light was 50% angle when he really meant to say that that's 50% of the intensity of the fill light. It's oh, not yes, as you're right. strong of a light Both and it's it should on be the 90 opposite degrees. side 90 angle. Degrees. Yeah, it's yes. 90 degrees off the angle. 100% so correct. Just, just 50% missed, fill. In other words, you want it to look, uh, see how she's cut in half there? Half of it, she's light, the key lights at 100% and the fill lights at 50%. Yeah. And it, it causes a separation on the face. So half the face is brighter than the other one. That gives you a, a look of dimension. Yes. And with the backlight on the hair and the shoulders, it really makes that subject pop. And lights From aren't expensive like yes. they yes. were in the old days. No, I'm using, literally, I'm using 5,000K LED lights that I got from home. What does 5,000K mean? That's just the luminescence of the brightness, more of the whiteness of the light itself. Right. It's the, yeah. it's not so much of, of a yellow, a yellow or dull, soft white. It's a very bright, white, intense light, more like sunlight. Yeah, so uh, lights are rated in color temperature. Yeah. And w what you would see like a regular bulb is about 3,000. Yep. Um, and, and so the sunlight is in between 5,000 and 6,000 lumens. Um, and, and so it, it changes the color. True light like Leland's got there is, is a brighter white, like a reveal light. They sell GE sells these reveal lights, yeah, right? Those are really when you bright. go into Home Depot and they have those little boxes up and you've got the white, white, the reveal, and then you've got that yellowish that we all grew up with some yeah, applications. Those are nice. Right. Yeah, it depends on how you want to filter it. And I haven't even applied filters here like I could or we could in any case, which like JS, our friend mentioned, who's been in videos for 40 years, says, you know, throw some amber film over top of your lights to help get the color right on the person's face and extract some of that glare that comes off of foreheads and cheekbones and noses and things like that. Lighting is part science and part art. <laughs> <laughs> um, you sure. see the guy show up with a with a light meter and they'll put it by the subject's face mm -hmm. and getting lights is is a tricky thing it takes a little practice um, but having those lights at an angle uh, giving the ability to bifurcate the face one side brighter than the other mm -hmm. um, it really makes for a better look I wish I had some examples yeah. on here next time we do revision two we'll show some examples of that Okay, next slide. Because slides are so special. We have to have our slides, right? Audio, why don't you start down this pathway? <laughs> yeah, that's always fun because I'm a guy that's a little different than most. I started with an interface, a mixer like you see there, the Behringer. Um, I actually had the Zenus, uh, not the Q version, not the um, USB version, but the 3.5 millimeter mic in version, which wasn't really working well for me here because of my unique situation and conditions with the computer. Um, audio for me is obviously number one. It's the most important feature of every broadcast. 100%. If you mess up the audio, you're going to mess up your audience viewability. Uh, they have to be able to hear what you're saying. doesn't matter what you look like. If you remember back in the days of uh, rabbit ears and tinfoil, <laughs> we spent a lot of time trying to hone in and get the snow off the picture, but you yeah. really didn't care so much whether the picture came in all the way so long as we could hear what the, the show was saying. So that's obviously the most important. I'm going to restate what Leland just said. I've been streaming for a long time. If you drop a few frames or the frame fuse, it freezes, like if Leland's picture froze right now, but the audio still came through, I could still continue to have a conversation with him. Absolutely. If the audio breaks up, your conversation is over. That's how critical audio is. And let me tell you, from a production standpoint, audio is always the, the gremlin is in the audio. Video works. It's on or off. Seems audio, good. there's always a problem. We had problems getting our audio to work on this because we're doing some advanced <laughs> stuff. We're capturing on Zoom. We're using Wirecast. We're feeding loopback audio. 
So there's a lot going on just to this little teeny production that we're doing. When I was, I got one funny story. When I was uh, doing the PGA, one of the PGA events that I did in Florida, it was two minutes before the PG before the event started. My partner's on the phone with me yelling at me because there's no audio on the stream. And I looked, I double checked everything. And I had a rack, uh, 24, like a 30U rack about waist high I, with multiple pieces of gear in it. And I went to the back of the rack and I just jiggled a few of the connectors and the audio came on. <laughs> oh, no. Those yeah, are the kind the of nightmares that we've had with audio over the years. Audio uh it can be a gremlin but i'm going to tell you after 24 years i want to go back to the slide because i want to point some stuff out here um i started with these usb mixers this is one of them right here i have i have this sitting in my storage shed over here um getting a good microphone i say is you're going to be your most important priority because that's going to define your your whole show is based upon the quality of your audio for so sure. if you're going to spend any money at all, you're going to spend it on a, on a microphone. Audio-Technica, the Heil PR40, which is what uh, several of the broadcasters are out there. And then the Shure SM7B is the one that Joe Rogan's using. It's about mm-hmm. four, in between four and $500. That's yeah. a really good microphone as well. You can get an Audio-Technica USB for under $100 that sound pretty darn good to get yeah. started. Well, even the uh, sure fifty eights for fifty sixty dollars. Oh yeah, those a, a are those benefit are... over a lot of the you know webcam mics and things like that that people are going to be using to start. Yeah. So, so I, I started. One. Let me just show you one I'm using that you're listening to right now that might not be the most perfect mic on the market, but I actually got it because it was almost branded to my brand <laughs> with the BC Masters. You know, BC being Best Conceptions is my business name. This is a condenser microphone that I got on a high discount, but it's about a hundred dollar mic. And I have had beautiful um, use of this over the last year or so and haven't really had any complaints at all. It's a USB mic and I I enjoy it. It comes with the stand, comes with the mic, comes with the foam cover, Um, doesn't come with the shock mount. That is another thing we should highly recommend people that aren't familiar with microphone equipment. The shock mount is there. Put the box back up so, so everybody can see it. Yes. And this the, is just one you can take a look at on Amazon and I see. I think if the writing is backwards. Range. They're Oops. mirroring. Oh, is it? They're mirroring. Yeah. <laughs> well, that could be me, Jen. Is it coming backwards on my now communities, too? right? The writing on that box is backwards. That's oh Hold because of my again. camera. No, my camera. I flipped my camera around. Oh yeah, that's why. To make the scene. It's still backwards. It's still backwards right <laughs> that's now. That's funny. Here I can flip it. It's BC Masters. See, show the everybody in real time what you can do. Um uh, Leland uses VMix as his software switcher. Flip. So this is basically, I flipped myself in the frame so that I could adhere to what I would consider the standard format there. If I flip back, you can see my green oh, screen yeah, cuts yeah. out on the corner yeah, over there. Yeah, yeah. And that's the reason I had to do that. Hey, so that I topic's mean, coming up soon. Another couple slides away. Yeah. So it, it's BC Master. So I want to make sure people get that right. Best conception. Okay. So uh, we, we could do a whole show on audio oh yeah i just want to tell everybody i started off using these mixers and ex- some expensive ones four or five six hundred dollars mm-hmm. um but guess what i always had a noise level that i could never get out of the audio chain i even had some engineers come over to my house and we could not get that audio noise and it sounded like this these Most are really likely- designed for mechanical live performances yeah most likely and not components. recording in a studio then i went to these focus rights box this is the box that i'm talking into right now it mm-hmm. is dead quiet you connect this in and it there's no absolute no noise the preamps in these focus rights are superior to what you're mm-hmm. going to get out of out of any of the mixers um, and these focus rights are very inexpensive this one's 150 bucks uh, and then you plug your pro mic in. There's two mm-hmm. channels you see on the front. So you can plug a mic and an instrument into there. 
And that's something we should just touch on, John, because not a lot of people will be aware of this. For instance, the mic that I have being USB is self-powered. It has a component chip in it that receives power from the USB port. In the case of an XLR mic, which you see most older systems are built upon or DJ equipment of any sort is usually XLR. You've got the three prong jacks going into a box that have to power mics like this. Not necessarily many mics, but he's got an example there of the focus rate that he's speaking of. That is an amplified unit to Correct. give power to the mic. That's so right. Without that, the mic won't function properly. Yeah, true. So th this this was a big upgrade for me in my audio chain. Was I'm going sure. away from the mixer and going to this Focusrite. In my main studio, I have a very expensive Focusrite that offers, I think, twenty inbound channels. It's a rack two U rack mount piece of gear, and it's okay. outstanding. Uh, but it was expensive. It was over a thousand bucks. These little two channel, they make a one channel. They call it a solo. They make a two channel. Two. It's this is a two i two. They mm -hmm. make a four channel and a six channel, and they start at about eighty bucks and go up to about three hundred. I highly recommend these things. They're super good quality and super quiet and had and super reliable. Had really good luck, and that's got USB on the back. Uh, that's the front you're seeing there. So you plug in your, your microphone or an instrument into the front and in the back, there's only, the only thing back there is power and USB and the USB plugs into the back of the computer. That's it. Very nice. Very nice. And then the last piece about good, having good audio, especially on any sort of video conferencing where you've got a return channel is having headphones on. Tell everybody why it's so important to have headphones. There's a little thing called acoustic echo, and that's caused by a loopback of the audio feed coming out of your speakers being returned to the source through the microphone you're using. So what that does is it reverberates and causes a sound wave to go through the entire system that can literally at sometimes blow out equipment. So yeah. it's dependent on how strong that signal is, of course, or how loud it is when it's brought in. But the key factors is you're hearing your own voice usually echo back to yourself or you're just really creating an unacceptable experience for the viewer in any case because it just continues to reverb exponentially and creates it so you can't hear anything. <laughs> and headphones fix that problem. Yeah, just plug it in. You're done. Even if you're using the <laughs> Apple little ear pod things, you can feed those back into the computer and that's going to solve a lot of issues for you. A lot of people doing that on Zoom and on the, uh, the professional broadcast people. I see a lot mm -hmm. of them using the little teeny ear pods or whatever yeah, they're called. Yeah, I've got now. some here, actually, that I was <coughs> testing. I, I was sampling these. The vendor sent them over to me the other day. You're not to, I'm not going to actually recommend this vendor at this time. But this is a unit I picked up. It's actually really cool because it charges with a little USB port, and it holds the two devices in here while it's charging. And these little Bluetooth headsets just pop out, pop into your ear. They hold in really well into your ear and they automatically fire up. They go live right away. And then this little unit is a self charger. So it doesn't even have to be plugged in after it fully charges. You just throw the earbuds back in here and it'll charge them from the battery that's in the box. Oh, 40 bucks. It's, or they go up, you know, you want to go pro cheaper level, than the probably. apples. That's for sure. Oh yeah. You want to go pro. You're talking two, three, four hundred dollars for something. Yeah. Like that. I think I paid 150 for mine, but I have the first model. Now they're on the second version, which are better. Yeah, and there's a I lot of different brands those. out there. We have so to watch buy it good, sometimes. You can get good headphones for 60, 70, 80, 100, 120 bucks. Sennheiser. Yeah, only like here. I'm going to switch back to the slides. Klipsch, so or what is it? Klipsch? Klipsch? How do you pronounce Klipsch, that? Klipsch, Klipsch yeah. is Klipsch another one that headphones. I would highly recommend. Sennheiser. Sony is what I'm wearing right now, or some really old Sonys. Yeah. Um, but I like them. They sure, Sony Sennheiser are some of my favorite uh, headphones, but spend 80 bucks on a good set of headphones. It's going to fix a lot of your problems. And this is another place you can get your mic if you need to. Now, a lot of the gaming headsets that are out there nowadays have some really nice condenser mics on them. I was really impressed with this $30 set of headphones that I bought on Amazon. I did a review for them. I got these for free. But the fact of the matter was, is that I use these and compared to, to the mic in front of me right now, a lot of the people that get on live with me are like, did you just switch mics? You sound just a little bit different, but it's <laughs> not drastic. It's almost the same quality as the mic sitting in front of me. So price wise, this was a really good investment, but does every, you know, everybody really want to sit there with big cans on their ears and a mic in their face when they're talking? No. 
Yeah, but it's better than having a big giant mic that you and I have sitting in your face. A lot of people like the headsets because it takes up that less I room agree. on your desk, right? That I agree. And one thing I want to say to those people out there who want to do video like this, if you're coming from podcasting, please move the mic out of your face. <laughs> just just slide it over another couple few inches so that you can see all of your face and not have that typical podcaster look where the mic is right here covering up half your face. So usually in broadcast TV, they get the mic out of the frame. But in the radio world, the mic's always in front of the frame. Always. Just watch Joe Rogan and any of those guys. They all have a big, giant, sure microphone right in their face. Yeah, it's just Comes from radio lot. versus TV. Most of the TV yeah. guys are using <laughs> boom mics. So they've got that's a mic true. two inches over your head out of the frame. Uh, that's a whole nother story. We can do a one whole podcast on each one of these topics. Yeah, and one thing we didn't cover about the audio mixing is the fact that there are virtual mixers. I use Voice Meter by BB Audio, which is an it's a computer software system. So rather than using a hardware component at all, I mix most of my audio right on my PC and do it all. Right. Yeah, there's several solutions uh, for PC and Mac for, for doing that as well. Mm -hmm. All right, continuing on. Let's take that slide and then go down here. Video switching. We talked a little bit about this. Go ahead, Leela. Now we're talking. Um, this is the system I'm currently coming into Zoom with right now is vMix, the one you see displayed on the graphic there. It's basically a live streaming software switching platform with a built-in encoder that allows you to send a signal across the internet to whatever ingest source you may be sending to to provide a quality video broadcast on the other end up to 4K. Similar systems like OBS, Mimo Live, Wirecast, and TriCaster are all out there made by different companies that provide somewhat the same services. There are several others besides that that we don't have listed, but these would probably be the ones you'll find the most uh, used in live production out there currently today. TriCaster being more or less a, a Windows box in a, in a rack unit that gets mounted in. It's very similar to a Windows device with software that would be installed on it. Um, and then we have the hardware solutions that come along as well, John. I think you can cover that better than I could. Yeah, so I started off in this world um, going down the same pathway. I started off with the low-end stuff. Uh, Webcam, Ma Webcam Max was the first uh, software app that I used. Remember that one? Mm -hmm. uh, on a Windows box, yep. I don't know, 20 some 20 years some ago. Years ago. Came out. <laughs> and it was like super cool because you could do all fancy graphics. You could do chroma keying like like leland's doing right now yeah and this isn't actually a set i'm looking you're looking at me in front of a curtain right now <laughs> basically pay no attention to the man behind the curtain yeah, right. oh you screwed it up going. over there now I, that's all right I can, I can do that real quick maybe here this is how we fixed it if we, if we stand up we slide our curtain back behind the, the frame that's holding it and we get out of the way there you go <laughs> magic so Just like I, I graduated from Webcam Max and I went to a product called Wirecast, which runs on the Macintosh and PC both. But by then I turned into a Mac guy and I used Wirecast since version four back on the Windows side of the house and then moved to Mac. And it does all this. I'm using it right now to record the show. So switching yeah. the show right now, I'm using Wirecast to flip back and forth so I can flip yeah. back and forth between the slides and then this application here, this is uh, built in layers. We've got a background video playing. We've got lower thirds that are animated. And we've got, we've got Leland's video coming through Zoom and then my camera feed all fed into this composite like you would see on CNN, right? Mm -hmm. This is all done using Wirecast. And I'm using a similar method to change things like on my screen over there if I wanted to tell you to share this on Facebook. I'm using vMix to bring in another layer in that window next to me to show people other graphic features that are sent through the software into John's system on his end. I think that this is probably the number one question that I get when I do broadcast up on Facebook and I've got a lower third or I've got the ability to show my desktop. Mm -hmm. People want to know how we're doing that. Yeah. And it gives you complete flexibility for branding. Branding is the probably the most important thing for you guys desiring to get into this business. And so this gives you complete ability to uh, sustain your brand within this environment. Absolutely. I'm not pitching anything here. We're pitching Leland's book. And so there's no branding other than my lower third there. Yeah. Uh, but you have complete, I mean, if you're, in, if you're a realtor, especially if you're a realtor at home right now, you should be doing broadcast showing homes. You can 
throw up your branding on here. There's a ton of stuff you could be doing right now from your house uh, using an application like Wirecast. Um, and the prices start from all the way from free all the way up to $1,200 for the highest yeah. end. So that gives you an Pretty indication much. of the prices of, of these devices. And it's not to say that the free versions are really any less capable than some of the paid versions are. OBS being a free open source product can do really just about anything some of the high-end software. Right. So Leland are a part of a guild of professional broadcasters. And these guys are traditional TV guys that have a big truck outside the venue and have all those cables running in. And that's where these expensive uh, video switchers come in. Let me switch yeah. back to the slide so I can show you what I'm talking about. Now, so this one's this not is probably so expensive. the cheapest hardware switcher you can buy in the market right now. Absolutely. This uh, ATM Mini Pro. This one just released this week on two. Was it Monday or Tuesday of this week? Uh, Monday. Last they just announced week. Monday this the switcher. Week, yeah. Uh, this has four HDMI connectors, like is on your camcorder, mm -hmm. that you plug into the back of these things, and you see the cameras. One, two, three, and four. That's how easy it is to switch between those four cameras. And then you could do some wipes. Show some wipes. Yeah, I mean, as far as just in, in and making out. a merge into something else or having something do a fade over or if you wanted to do a fancy cube zoom yes. where you're flipping things yeah. around, right. um, even fade to blacks or anything like that. A simple cut is just going from frame to frame back and forth. Um, the merges and fades can take up a lot of resources on an Internet broadcast so much more than they would in a you know technical studio where they're doing you know sdi production and things of that nature and everything's right there in the system hard-coded wait a minute i gotta Bring switch i gotta switch back to your feet so you can people can see what you were just saying showing the oh i was just flipping things, things back yeah. and forth as far as a simple cut back and forth is between yeah. frame pictures yeah. i can fade and actually merge these to where they mesh together but i have an overlay here as well so show them the 3d me, one okay me being on top uh, which one was oh the 3d, 3D the cube yeah. the cube spin is basically i can do it behind me or i can go between two different scenes whoops i got a overlay going here where i can cube zoom from one scene yes. to another cool and that's where it backs out and comes back in i've got several the, others I here's the pro tip on on transitions anytime somebody new gets into the business when i see 15 different transitions in their composite i know that they're a newbie <laughs> you'll never see a pro no. Use anything but a fade or a cut. Yes. Except for Star Wars, he likes no, to use true. the the clock fade. I don't. It's oh an yeah. Indication yeah. of time moving forward. Yeah, right. That's true. Very very common in Star Wars if you if you pay attention to that. But you could do some beautiful stuff with some of these fades or go crazy. Um, my TriCaster box has thousands of f different fades in there, and for a week we sat there and we played with fade uh, with with oh, transitions. Uh, and we end up never using any of them because they're just you not. You can do a lot of weird stuff. Yeah, there's a slide just in so and a slide out or a page turn yeah. uh, are pretty common. You see those quite a bit. Um, I just faded to black in, there. In broadcast. See that one's that one looks good. The slide, yeah, the white slide, wipe, slide I mean, in and out. Yeah, yeah, those are nice. But there's a lot of the, the zooms. Another one that you can do where it like zooms out and zooms back in. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so just to finish up on the video switching. So this is the low-end one. If you ever go to a TV uh, studio, you'll see these giant control surfaces in front of these guys. And all those buttons are the uh, multiple cameras that are sitting in the studio, sometimes 10, 20, 30, 40 cameras feeding into these big switchers. Yeah. Uh, and that's all they're doing is these guys are switching between one camera to the next. Uh, and then you usually have a director telling the guy that's running the board, the TD, to go to camera two, go to camera three, go to camera four. And all he does is pushes those buttons. That's all that happens. Um, you probably won't need to get this level of sophistication, um, I don't think. I mean, our group, I'm sure, are the 80 percenters that would probably be fine using a software switcher. Uh, mm -hmm. If you want to get into the hardware, that's a, that's a whole different conversation above the scope of this broadcast. Yeah, but it becomes a matter of resource with the PC you're using or not using. And with the case of that ATEM Mini and the Mini Pro, 
I think the mini is going to be a, a big benefit to a lot of people because that one's under three hundred dollars. This newer one is about six hundred bucks. Right. So twice the price for not a whole ton, a lot of new features, but there are some really cool features that have been added to the new one along with some more device access. Um, but I think the two hundred and seventy, two hundred ninety dollar model would be great for a lot of new people out here, like churches and and more professional, maybe even small corporate events would be done very easily with those. I'm guys. seeing a lot of the high end uh, YouTube guys start to use the the mini. Yeah, there's the mini yeah, and the mini sense. pro. Um, I'm seeing them start to use the switcher when they're cool. showing stuff and they're switching between multiple cameras. Switching between multiple cameras in a podcast makes for a much better production. Having a single camera set up and trying to look at that single camera for any length of time, you get fatigued and then yeah. you get bored. So having the ability to switch between slides and camera and different feeds is important to keep the to keep the interest in your audience. That's Absolutely. that's the reason why you want to have multiple cameras. In it. We've so, been conditioned to multiple right. cameras from watching television anyway, John. It's one of those things that we've kind of been bred into us as we grew up that we expect to see all these different cutaways and takes and views from different perspectives so this is perfect leland just showed you his magic <laughs> yeah a little bit i can turn uh, can off go... my magic real easily too i can go back to just me on black and let everyone see what's actually going on behind yeah. the scenes here which is really nothing but a muslin <laughs> that was purchased off of amazon so For when what? I say muslin, Cheap. it's 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I used a Walmart sheet for the first year, I think, when I was broadcasting on video because it worked. It was an off color, but it, it was, I was able to key it out. Uh, you could paint the wall behind you with apple yep. green if you wanted to and yep. get the same effect. So it doesn't really matter which way you do it. So Chroma, if you've got the room for it, my wife won't let me put up my green screen because it's a big stand that sits behind me and takes up yeah. all kinds of room in my office. Mm -hmm. I had to take it down, but they, I found roll up ones. Oh, I found you? one that's like in a, a, like in a projector in a little box. Oh yeah. I want to get my it, hands on one of those. I you saw pull that. it straight up. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'll probably be buying one of those. <laughs> that, uh, because, that was cheap. That was what? $130. Hundred and that was change. really cheap. And change. Yeah. Um, if anyone wants to find some of the stuff that I recommend, if you go out to amazon.com forward slash shop, and I know we don't have a banner for this, um, forward slash my name, Leland Best, I have categorized out for green screens, hardware equipment, computer equipment, just some of the stuff that I've really seen used or seen other people use that have good response rates on that, or I've seen, you know, graded at five stars and I've talked to the people who manufacture it. It's all there. So if you want to find green screen components, even the green suits that the guys wear totally disappear on yeah. camera. Um, that stuff's available on there along with all the webcams. And now I don't have professional cameras on Amazon listed yet. A couple I do, but I'm going to be working out that with John in the coming days. Show your, go back to your green screen because we were on the slide when you're. Yeah. So basically I can filter this out with a keyframe that there says, find the color behind this guy and then filter it out. And then that way I can put whatever I want behind me, whether it's a scene in the Bahamas, whether it's the community scene you see in front of me now, if I wanted to color key that in, I could turn my color key back on, which basically blanks out everything behind me. Yeah. And then I can come in as a source with a different image. You saw that little red community frame behind me. Now that entire frame is behind me instead of just the set that it was in through the window. Um, so I could take any graphic. I could make myself look like I was on a desert island or in Hawaii or wherever I want to be. On the and it can be a video as well. It doesn't have to be yeah. a static image. Yeah. yeah, I do have a video as well that I could share on here real quick. I think I got some clouds. Yeah, you can play somewhere. any video behind the chroma key. Where did my clouds go? Here and so are. you're sitting at your house in a yeah. corner of your office or whatever, your front room, right? That's right. And, it's like uh, the area I'm broadcasting screen? is five. My green screen is about six feet wide, and I have about four foot of depth or five foot of depth to work in. So and when you put that virtual studio up, it looks very professional. It looks real, doesn't it? It looks yeah. like I'm really sitting in a studio right now. Yeah, except you've got a little flickering on the bottom I've got to work on, it's the seat here. Yep. It's because it's mesh behind yep. me yep. and the lighting gets through that mesh. It breaks right. up the filter. So it doesn't work as well. Well, got to get a deep. solid chair. I mean, this used to cost millions and millions of dollars to do this stuff. Yeah. That's right. You can do it for pennies on the dollar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Green screen is, is super easy to do. And all the software supports green screens. You can do green Pretty screen much. built into Zoom, but it's really bad. 
I, we recommend if you don't use those professionally. Yeah. And when you're trying to filter through another system rather than directly from where you're located, it's going to be a difficult task because and some of them actually try to emulate a green screen without having a green screen. They Correct. try to filter out things based on depth of field yeah, that's where they, they determine where you're at and then they yeah. try to hide everything behind you. Yeah, Zoom, that's what Zoom does. And they look bad when people start moving around. Yeah. The, you lose an arm, you lose a head. Uh, it's not good. But it's fun, but it's not good professionally. Uh, you can get a green good for system. things like this, though. It works well for bringing in guests, we found. So. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Just about to the end of this run. Uh, yeah, three quarters. Here's one that you won't see very often in production. I was trained on this years ago because uh, I hung out with TV people. Mm -hmm. And they taught me in photography, guys. You'll learn this in photography about mm -hmm. the rule, the rule of thirds, and you see mm -hmm. how those lines are broken on. Break the frame into three. Yep. A lot of cameras and applications on the phone now do this, and the subjects are going to line up on one of these thirds, whether it's the middle third or one of the outer thirds. You're going to align the frame, and you see some examples. You see the one that says "bad" on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Anytime somebody's in the middle of the frame like that, you know that the camp, there's not a good uh, director of photography there. They would never allow that. Your eyes yeah. and your head should not be in the middle of the frame. It should nope. be in the upper third. See the image on the right? He's perfectly yep. in that upper third up there, the eyes. No. Nope. That's where you want your subject. And the other example of good and bad below, where she's leaning into the frame is good, and leaning outside of the frame or outer frame is bad. And that was why I had to mirror what I had earlier when I was showing John why I was backwards on the text is this is how it had mirrored coming in off the camera. So if even if I slid myself over, I would have to slide myself all the way over to the other side of the picture yes. to make it adequate, to make it the way we're talking here. If I would have left it here, it wouldn't have worked. So what I have to basically do is go back and mirror that frame over which also gives me the ability to look at myself on camera and know which way I'm pointing <laughs> without having the other way where it's opposite of where you're pointing is what you're seeing. Switch and over again, because I was once again on the slide and not, oh, I'm, I'm a sorry. bad, I'm a bad TD today. So if I'm, if I'm sitting here on the other direction, which is the way the camera is actually picking me up, I would have to slide way over here to be appropriately framed. But when I brought it in like this, I want to be sitting on this side. So I simply mirrored the camera and you're catching the edges of my green screen over into my closet there, just so you guys know what's going on. I didn't cut it away from the frame. And now I can slide myself back into position since I've mirrored myself. And by mirroring myself, it also, like I said, allows me to see my left hand in front of me move like I would if I were standing in a mirror. If I don't right, do that, right. everything's the opposite. And if I go to right. point somewhere, I'm usually going to point right. the wrong Backwards. direction. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a little tricky to get over. Okay. Whoa, you zoomed me. What happened no, to my me? mouse did that. Yeah. Okay. I <laughs> got into slide. a little hole. <laughs> going to the next slide. The wonders of streaming. Set design. Now, mm -hmm. this is three famous YouTubers, and okay. you'll notice some common uh, themes behind their background. Um, if you don't have a green screen like Leland, you want to build a nice set, notice mm -hmm. what they're doing. They're providing lights and interesting objects in the background. They're yeah. well lit, and they've got lower lights in the background. That guy has mm -hmm. one of those rock salts. I actually have yep. one. My wife yep. actually Himalayan has salt lamp. And then he's got a teeny little blue LED light lighting up his back door. Right? Yeah, I like that. It provides depth of field and the separation between the subject and the background. And mm -hmm. you see, when I turn the camera back on me, you'll see I got a bunch of objects in the back that need to be lit up, but I've got some interesting stuff behind me. I've got a real skeleton, and then I've got yeah. a gothic door. And then I've got a big TV, and then I've got my audio gear. Just interesting. It's not enough. your mother-in-law, right? <laughs> All right. So <laughs> set up some interesting, and it, just look at the frame, and, and you can get these LED lights really cheap on Amazon these days, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that go Absolutely. the complete spectrum of colors, RGB. And the, some of them run on batteries, and you could just put it up behind there to light up something interesting. Or mm -hmm. you can buy the Hue lights, strip lights, and use those to light up a background. A lot of people do that too. 
Yeah, I had some actual fish tank lights that were a set of strip LEDs that would go up into the cover of a fish tank. (laughs) Worked really good because they're on a control uh, wire with a switch on it. So I was mounting them with sticky tape above my head behind my in front of my green screen to do a backlight see my skeleton right here it's yeah, a little hard to is. see but he's standing back there that's right i got that you put a wig 50, on her? 50 years old he's got a johnny depp wig oh, from okay. uh, the pirate movie yeah pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> a little girl came in my house and she got crazy scared of the skeleton mm-hmm. and then i put that hat on him and she was okay with it oh cool <laughs> Uh, set set design shows me you're a pro or not. I can tell instantaneously. And some of these broadcasters that are at home that don't have a, a, a director of photography, the, the, the set designer, to set up a set, you'll mm-hmm. see when they go into some famous actor's house or the president or something, they spend a lot of time setting up that location in a house. There's great videos on YouTube that show why they chose a particular mm-hmm. spot in the house. Most of it having to deal with the sunlight coming in. Uh, but a lot of times they'll go in a corner. So they'll do a 90-degree shot in a corner. It gives more depth depth of field. You know what I've seen more than anything with the rookies, though, John? I don't mean that's not an insult in any way. It just means you're just starting. Um, yeah. That they tend to put themselves in front of windows and yeah. think that the – and I've seen so many people with lights behind them or hey, look, above their windows. head behind them. Yeah, and that's that's far enough back, though, that no, it really doesn't feet, affect – 30 feet, 30 feet back. Yeah when, yeah, when you're sitting seven feet in front of a window in your front room of your living room or your office or whatever, it so blinds the camera that it can't even pick up the colors properly in the room. Correct. So that's one of the things you really have to watch for. That's true. Yeah, we're getting close. Let's see. I think we got – couple more slides left. Mm-hmm. Now Leland's going to talk more about these because uh-huh. he's, he's used more of these than I have. I probably have. I have been involved with the live streaming websites, which are known as SAAS sites or software as a service. So for these sites to function for you, you have to pay normally a monthly fee. And in retrospect, there are a lot of these sites currently with the COVID-19 crisis going on that are offering their systems for free. They do have free versions of them with limited feature access, but they are all running basically on the same principle of what's called Web RTC or Web Real-Time Communications. It's a way to deliver video in real time through the browser system rather than having to composite it in-house in the studio. It's being composited in the cloud by peer-to-peer connections made through the browser between the actual host and the the visiting party that's in the broadcast. So what it tends to do is allow for some really cool um, methods of creating a switcher environment in a browser, similar to the vMix software. You're able to produce imagery. You can come on with a guest and do an interview format with several different layouts to the screen, like two, like we have side by side here, or a one person or a three or four person, up to six to 10 people in some cases, a lot like Zoom in that regard. But it, it adds more broadcast features like the lower thirds, the ability to bring in graphics, to share your screen, and to do other, you know, branding, uh, like bugs in the corner showing your branding logos and such. Um, but they can be limited in quality. So you are kind of at odds with the network connections that they deal with and their host environments and the servers that they use. So you never really know what you're going to get on a daily basis. It's just a, a risk you have to take. Boy, that was a mouthful. It is. Here's how I want to it. explain what these are. <laughs> StreamYard, for example, you can go on StreamYard and you can do a lot of the stuff that Leland and I do with the fancy programs. He uses vMix. I use Wirecast and OBS directly in the browser. So you don't need any software. You log into your account. You create a show. You can have call-in guests. It's a great solution for kicking you up a notch for 20 or 40 or 50 bucks a month i think Streamyard is probably the way to go a lot of people get started with with these and then you grow out of them because you don't have the flexibility that we have using 
Wirecast or VMix, right? And I just I just have to say, John, that's something I've been experiencing over the last several days with people coming into Zoom and coming into StreamYard and Be Live. The a lot of the first things they're asking is, can we play videos through the system? <laughs> can we see a video display that I want to I want to show my customer how my product works in a video that I made six months ago? Well, some of them do and some of them don't. So that's just one of the downfalls currently that they're experiencing. It's more or less capturing a screen of your desktop in order to play a video. And then you got to mess with the audio and all kinds of other things. So um, what I'm paying the particular notice of right now is stage 10.tv because they have the ability to import video and they also have a VOD system, which allows you to record all your stuff in their cloud and have it on their system when you need it. So stage 10.tv, the one on the bottom left. That is there. correct. Yeah. Yep. And the restream system that uh, he's also showing there is a component that's a little different than the switcher units, though they have built in their own studio switcher recently and within the last 30 days. Uh, restream is meant mostly for multicast, which is to say rather than just sending one stream out to Facebook or to YouTube, like most streamers do, you can send it to restream and then tell it which social sites you want it to send it to. That will send out a multiple set of signals to all of your social platforms through one signal of your own, saving yourself bandwidth and letting them handle it on there. We get this question a lot. Uh, Leland and I get this question a lot from people wanting to broadcast to multiple locations. They want to broadcast up to their YouTube and their Facebook and possibly LinkedIn all at the same time. And but StreamYard and Stage 10 and BeLive have those features built, built into built Stream. In. Yeah. to multiple platforms as what's well. the cost the monthly cost of restream you uh, the base is like 19 dollars a month so some are even cheaper there's one similar to restream which is called caster.io c-a-s-t-c-a-s-t-r.io mm -hmm. -E and i use that one currently as well um they start at like 9.99 or 14.99 a month depends on how they're feeling that day they go on sale all the time so you can usually get a, up to 30 40 sometimes 50 percent discount for like a year at a time Okay, last slide. We made it through. Cool. Okay, my uh, degree is in electronics, and as soon as I got graduated from college, I took the course for netware. Now, this is 30 years ago. I became one of the first certified Novell engineers in the state nice. of Nevada, and I installed hundreds and hundreds of networks around uh, Southern Nevada and California. I did some too. And in Arizona as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and so a lot of people will, are using Wi-Fi in their house. You see, I got a big no Wi-Fi yeah. Wi-Fi. There's so much, uh, interference in the air that you're, you, you're, you don't know it most of the times, but it drops out. And if you're trying to do a stream, you're going to drop audio and video packets. It's no bueno. So if you're a professional, I highly recommend that whatever computer you're using for your broadcast is directly connected in to your router. And you have an Ethernet switch on most of your routers. The reason why I showed this Wi-Fi router here is on the back of that thing, it's got four ports that you plug in your connections to. And every house that I've ever owned, I always put wired Ethernet in the rooms. I don't use Wi-Fi for general computing because it's just so unreliable. Yeah, it is. And even if you were to have to rely on Wi-Fi, I would highly recommend be close to your router with a 5G yeah. signal or 5, meg five gigahertz, five, 5 gigahertz signal rather than the 2.4 that's used yeah. in the standard broadband. Um, that's really all you can do. Yeah, a lot of people don't understand what the difference is between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. That's a whole show by itself. It but is. If you, if you log into your router and it gives you an option of 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, you want to use the 5 gigahertz for two reasons. It's faster, it's more reliable, and there's less interference less in 5 nice. gigahertz space. Yes. The only the FCC... downfall is getting through walls. So getting the less walls, walls, it doesn't go as far. Through. That's right. It's 100% right. So this is my, uh, you know, huge recommendation, uh, Bigly, as we'll call it, Bigly. My Bigly mm -hmm. recommendation for live, professional live streaming is use Ethernet. And if you're really a pro, you're going to have two connections out of the building, which I've done at some events before. Uh, I've had one fiber optic from AT&T and another connection into like a local cable provider, like in my city, it's Cox Communication. That way, if one of them died, the other one would automatically take over. I've had that happen before in my career. 
But in your house, if you can, please connect it in your computer into Ethernet. You're going to have a much better time. Yeah, absolutely. That's the uh, end I just of want the to program. Mention, I just we want are. to mention one tool before we go, John, sure. that we didn't mention, I didn't bring up before we even got there, is this one right here. It's called the WebRTC Troubleshooter, and it's available at test.webrtc.org. And the reason for this test is for you to give your computer a quick once over run through of your microphone, your camera, your network, your connectivity, and your throughput. This will tell you whether or not your system is capable of using most of these newer WebRTC features, platforms, and softwares that are available out there for use in broadcasting on a PC or a Mac. So I highly recommend, now I can't do it right now because my mics and cameras are being accessed by other software, but all you have to do is go to the site, hit the start button. It's going to run through and generate all these different check marks off of what it's able to do and not do with your system. And it will tell you what you may need to do to fix those issues if you have them. So I highly recommend people come out here and take a look at this site with their own systems just to see whether or not they're up to snuff yet or not. Great tip. All right. cool. You surprised me on that one. I forgot all about it, John. I totally <laughs> forgot about it. And... Uh, to just to close, here's my contact and Leland's contact info. Feel free to contact me directly, John at Preto. 24 years. Next year is my quarter uh, century in the streaming business. We incorporated it in 1996, Hello Network. Uh, we developed our own streaming technology because there, there was no word streaming when we started. And I hate the word streaming because everything on the web basically streams. I have big arguments with people about using the word streaming. It's inappropriate yeah, these days. It is. And uh, on Twitter, at human2, uh, if you want to get a hold of me there on Facebook, just search for John Preto and you'll find me. I'm happy. I, I don't do this for a living. I'm doing it to help out people. Um, people are asking me questions, uh, and I'm trying to help Leland out in his book. And I appreciate that Give very much, more, John. Uh, to find the book. Plug you on your book. Yep, just head over to bestliveguide.com, just like you see on the book cover there, and that will take you, it'll redirect you to my website on a download page where you, I'm giving it away right now uh, due to the crisis that we're in. I'll probably be selling this book very shortly because I just redid it for 2020, but I wanted to make sure everybody that needed it to get online now when they need it the most, it's available over the next probably 30 to 60 days for free. Just go grab it now. And I downloaded it. It's got some great information, except for the history. We need to. Yeah, thanks, John. I got to fix that for you. I was I was just giving a rough estimate of how things came together, but I'll, I'll make and, sure. I can uh, do if you need to get some fumigation on your house for the coronavirus, we are available <laughs> at, at a much overrated fee. <laughs> There's Leland and I. Yeah, that's us. And then we bring in Colin when we need him. <laughs> that's right. It's Colin. <laughs> He's the guy that takes care of all the bugs. Yeah. That's true. He does. Yeah. Well, thanks, John. Way, I appreciate uh, you having me. Huh? Just 57 minutes on the dot, a little longer than I thought, but I think this is good information. If you can get through an hour of listening to Leland and I, I think there's some good right. information there. I agree. Sounds good. All right, buddy. Well, we'll talk soon, John. Stay safe and six feet apart as much as possible. Yes, sir. I am. I have been. I've got. I got to go get groceries today. So, yeah. And I'll be doing some coursework here very shortly. I'm working with uh, Brad and Elizabeth on the back end to take this book into more of a sit down one on one and show people what the book was meant to help people with. So those who just really don't feel like reading through sixty or and I have a previous version that was 120 pages long. If you don't want to read through all that stuff and just want to hear from me face to face, we will be opening up those options in the next month or so. Probably start in May fourth. Okay, everybody, with that, we're out. See you guys. Take care. Have a great day.